Dave here, how are you? And welcome to the actual build of the Studio Pencil Box. I'm doing a five draw version and a three draw version. This one here on the bench beside me is still under construction. This one is the three draw version. This one's for my wife. My mum got the five draw version because she has more pencils. Nothing to do with the amount of love that I have for either of these women. Anyway, so we're going to start. Today we're going to talk about building the pine box. This is just the outside box. I'm going to break this up into two episodes because whilst it looks like it's a basic thing, there is a fair bit of detail that I want to go into with you. So 3.6 metres of pine, DAR, and the stuff that I got was 285 millimetres by 19 millimetres. And this particular lot of pine that I got came from New Zealand. Now there's two ways that we can do this. We can either make the box the width right off the bat, or we can make the box to the width of the timber that you've purchased, and then we can trim it down on the table saw to the width that you want. The way that I'm going to show on the pine box will be different to the way that I show you how to make these drawers. So on the pine box, which we just joint one edge to start, we're going to rip the board down to whatever thickness we need to take it down to. Now I think it's 253 millimeters. That's going to give us a little bit of tolerance to put the other side over the jointer and a little bit of sanding further down the track. I can't source readily half inch thick pine by 12 inches wide because it would probably warp and twist before anyone got a chance to sell it on to the end user. Three quarters of an inch is a whole lot more stable. So I don't want three quarters of an inch in the box, I want it down to half an inch. So now we're going to run it through the thicknesser. The thicknesser will bring the timber down to, to half inch consistent right the way through and it will also dress up any bumps that may have happened to the timber uh, in the hardware store or in the timber yard so you can clean it up. So it's, it's double purpose. We're going to pop the timber down on the saw bench and I'm going to dock it off, I'm going to dock it square into start and I'm going to dock it so that it's all one piece. So we need four pieces to start out of this three and a half metre length and those four pieces are going to be the top, one end, the bottom and the other end so that when it's all put together it's the grain is going to follow right the way around the box. It'll look really nice. So here we are, we're going to dock off the timber to the right lengths once all that's done, we'll lay it out and we're going to mark each joint. So you can see here I've got the video showing A is, well actually our first mark is D, then the next joint is going to be AA, and the next joint will be BB, the next joint will be C and C, and the last part will be D. Now that's going to marry around to the first of the joints. It's easy. When we've got it all marked out, A, B, C and D, even though the letters are all in one direction so we can read it, it's always handy to put a little arrow at the top as well, right along the top edge. So we have a quick reference point when we take it to the box jointer, we know exactly which side goes where. Now we're going to work from that one edge with the box joints, but first of all we need to set the depth of the cutter in the box joint. I make box joints with my router table. I've got a little Rockler box joint jig that I use. You may want to use a table saw with a dado blade in it, your call. So here I am, I'm setting the depth, I have a piece of offcut from the actual thickness of the timber that we're going to build the box out of, and setting the spiral up cutter. Now just a quick one, a spiral up means that the timber is going to be drawn up out of the cut towards the router. So if the router is in a router table, it's actually going to be pulling the timber down. That's what a spiral up is. You can buy a spiral down as well and I can go into the reasons why we have different cutters, but spiral up is the one that I prefer to use most of the time. Now we've got the box joint jig set up and my dust extraction is all in place, I can start creating the box joints. And it is so much fun. These are so rewarding doing box joints. If you need more information on how to do box joints, I have a video that I've done previously. I'll put a link in the description box so you can have a look at that. But they're pretty easy. I'm gonna lay, lay the board out with the box joints all pushed back together and you can see how it's all the one piece of timber. How cool does that look? Now we're going to sand the box up on its edge, all this one piece, and I'm going to fold the box into shape dry joint. Now I do this for a couple of reasons. I do this so I can check that all of the joints are going to fit nicely and also I can have a look at it and say, right, um, am I happy with the way that it's ended up? Uh, the other thing is I can make sure that I've got the right size clamps ready. I'm looking and say, right, well, I need this size clamp here, and I need the other size clamp just over there. 
and it's all going to work because when we're gluing up I haven't really got enough time to go running around looking for clamps. <laughs> During this dry fit I'm also looking to see that I've got the joints done correctly. Now I may need to put them over the box joint jig again to increase the depth if I haven't got enough of the fingers penetrating past the face of the piece of timber on the other side of the joint. That's pretty easy. It's basically having a look here if, if I can't feel the fingers of the joint poking up from this side I'm not going to have anything to sand down to make the end grain look really nice. So that's why we do that. When we've got it all ready, well we're ready to glue then. I just use type bond glue and I use the type bond 3 because it gives me a longer time to go off. Type bond 1 tends to go off pretty quickly. Type bond 3 gives you about 9 minutes to play around with it all before it starts saying hey I'm going to grab a hole pretty quick if you don't hurry up. <laughs> okay so we're gluing it all up and I use the glue brush but I don't use the brush end I use the spatula end. Now you don't have to use one of these you can use a spatula from whatever you can use a paint stirrer for crying out loud anything a little bit of plywood will do it. Anything that's got a nice sharp little edge that's pliable and flexible that works but I just find that this little guy does the trick for me. All glued up and then we push it all together and then we can put the clamps on. Now you can either use a strap clamp right the way around the box or you can use conventional clamps and pull it up but don't put the clamp right in the center of the board don't put it right in the middle here and pull this way because you'll just squish the box you'll squish the box in flat and the joints instead of being a nice square joint they'll do this thing and then when you take the clamp off they ain't gonna spring <laughs> they won't spring back magically so make sure that you don't put so much pressure on that you deform the shape of the timber you pull the joints in nice and tight and make sure that the joints are pulled in like so if you follow what I mean don't have it so that oh they're not quite touching on the inside they've got this part of the joint I'll just turn this around here the joints have to come down tight okay fingers come, come through joints have got to be tight right, these are great boxes I love them the outside of the box is all glued and the glue is set and we don't sand it quite yet what we're going to do now is we're going to cut the back in now the back I like to have inside the box so if you have a look at this one you can see that the it looks like it's all the one piece of timber right the way around see that we're not seeing any end grain on the end this is one of the reasons why I like to glue the back inside here we are we've ripped and we've docked the piece of timber to the right size we're going to put the glue around the inside of the box at the back making sure it's not going in too far just enough to cover the thickness of the back and the back has also been sized down to half an inch thick and now we're going to slide the whole box down on top you might find that the back has a little bit of a twist or a belly or something in it so we're going to take advantage of some weights and I'll show you how to do that if you're like me and you go through a midlife crisis and decide you want to get some guns back and <laughs> you buy a set of these and that will last for about two months if you're lucky, don't throw these away, don't get rid of them. These are invaluable in your workshop. The reason I'm doing this is when I milled this board down from three quarter to half inch, it developed a little bit of a bow because I released some of the moisture that was on the inside of the board. There we go, the back is now in and glued and next thing to do is wait for that to glue to go off and then we're going to sand that but we're going to come back next week and we're going to continue on with how to do this we're going to do a whole lot more on the box we'll finish the outside box off next week so make sure you come back for that one see you later